Hello, 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 hello. It is Deborah Peters, and I'm just getting wired up here. <laughs> wow, hi, Susan from Florida. It's been a really busy day. How's your day going? So good to see you here. I haven't I haven't seen you on here in ages. So talk to me, girl. What's going on in Florida? I'd love to hear all about it. Susan is my great friend. She's an amazing barber. She's in Florida, and I'm always curious what you're up to. Vladio, how are you? And Doug, good to see you. Wow, let me tell you, <laughs> today has been like nonstop. And just as I was queuing everything up to jump on here, the glass of water I sat on my desk so I'd have something to drink during the show just went all over the place. And so I had to stop and mop everything up. <laughs> it's all good. The thing I was concerned about mostly was my keyboard because a lot of the water landed on it. So it was, you know, how do you put a keyboard in rice, right? In fact, I'm gonna turn it upside down right now so that whatever water I didn't get out of the keys, it'll just kind of drip out. Um, hi, Jim, nice to see you. Uh, so yeah, it's, I thought today might be a really good um, conversation would be how to know if you're in alignment. You know, it's uh, we talk about alignment all the time, at least I do, and I talk about the importance of being in alignment and the value of being in alignment. Um, but I can't really ever really recall giving you tools like tangible, measurable instances of what being in alignment is all about. And you can see how crazy my day has been by all the papers on my desk. And frankly, I was just like moving things around, mopping up the glass of water I spilt. And, and I didn't even get a chance to like put things in order. So I have a messy desk and um, maybe that's a, a creative kind of thing, right? If I have a messy desk, got a lot going on. So I'm being really creative. Wow. Hey, Maurice. Nice to see you. Boag, great to have you join me. So today's topic is all about how do you know if you're in alignment? And I think the easiest and, and most efficient way to um, be able to give you those tools is to actually just share with you some client stories. Um, you know, where clients were at when I started working with them and what kind of experiences they were having. Yeah, you want to hear about that? All right. Um, and some of the things that we shifted so that they could actually get into alignment so they could, they could scale their businesses or they could actually make their businesses more profitable. And I love telling um, stories like this. In fact, I sent off the final version of my book to the publisher yesterday. So, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I have a meeting with them tomorrow morning at quite literally the crack of dawn because they're based in New York City and uh, I don't care. I'd get up in the middle of the night to have this conversation. It's, um, it's been a long time coming. And you know what? It was really fascinating to me um, because I, I sat down yesterday just to kind of finish up a couple of little edits that we'd been talking about. And it was... Uh, do you ever have that moment when you're when you're on your computer and you know that it should be like a really simple thing that you're doing, but you can't figure out how it works. Like you just can't figure out how does this word document, you know, save or just something really ridiculous. And um, I was kind of stuck and I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to toss it out there anyway. I'm just sending it and, you know, we'll just look past this one little thing and it'll be fine. And so I kind of put that exclamation mark um, into the body of the email, email and I said, look, I'm, I don't know what's wrong with me this morning, but I'm having a really difficult time getting this document to do what I want it to do. And so I'm sorry. And they're like, don't even worry about it. And when I sent the email, and I attached uh, the link. It was uh, like, I was just like, wow, it was cathartic. Like I, I had a little cry, you know, it was like, holy cow. I, uh, I completed it. 
And the last three months of working on this book have truly been cathartic. I think, you know, if it was old school writing on paper, I think the paper would have water blotches all over it because I think I probably cried the most the last few months. And uh, it's just nothing other than euphoria. Like there was no sadness in it. It was just happy, very happy, very satisfied. Um, I feel uh, like I blew through some kind of block in my uh, mindset. I feel like I released some kind of old program, like a limiting belief from the past. So it's cool. It's really cool. Hi, Jose. And Enrique, nice to see you. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. And that's why my desk is so crazy. Hi, Connie Dunn. Nice to see you. I miss you. Um, so you guys want to pop in here some kind of comment about how your day is going, maybe uh, what, what you're dealing with today, like I'd really love to know. So it's not just me jumping on here and telling stories, but I'd really like to get to know you guys and I'd like to know what you got going on. That would be super cool. So how do you know when you're in alignment? Well, let me, let me tell you about a conversation I had this morning with the CEO of, of a mortgage bank. And I've known this fellow for at least, I don't know, 12 years. And uh, he, you know, maybe 15. And he's run three, maybe four really significant sized mortgage banks. Um, he's been a client out of those 12 or 15 years more for more time than not. And um, we we're having a conversation this morning about a department that uh, that that he's building out. And it's it's the non QM, if you guys are familiar with the mortgage industry. And as we were talking about this, he was sharing with me a um, an account executive that he has that's with his team and he's he's was going out today to to actually go meet with a broker and so we talked about the the attitude around that and we talked about the alignment around that and you know one way of finding out if you're um you're in alignment or not is if what you're asking for is actually coming to you if you're actually experiencing it Hi, Robert. Hey, are you guys still up in Northern California? It's been a long time since I've seen you. So would love to know where you're at and what you're up to. I think you were in the pharmaceutical industry last time we spoke. So very curious and glad to have you join me today. As we were talking about his um, account executive and the broker, the language patterns that he used around making this um, call, the sales call, if you will, uh, was all about, I have to. And it came from a place of not believing or not perceiving that um, he was appreciated. And what's interesting around that is, you know, when you're not in alignment, you look outside of yourself and you measure what feedback you're getting from others as a validation tool for who you're being. And this is probably the biggest shift that anyone can make in their lives. When, and look, I know we're all human, like no, nobody really likes rejection, right? Um, but if you can see it in another way, and he, he was saying that this morning when he did his speech to his team, um, he had like three points, you know, it's, it was all about create, contribute and, and execute. And when he delivered the speech, everybody just sat there and looked at him and he felt then that he wasn't valued that 
that even going on the sales call, um, he wasn't valued. And, and so what is it about that perception? And I asked him this, I said, what could, how could you perceive that differently that would enable you to have a completely different experience going out with your account executive today, standing in front of your team, delivering your speech, you know, how could you change your perception of that so that you could actually recreate how you experience this day or how you experience your team or how you experience the growth of your business? And this is really what challenges pretty much all of us. And I'm included in that. I am not immune to these kinds of things. Just because I'm a coach doesn't mean I don't have any challenges. It doesn't mean that I, I you know, don't feel stuck at times. It just means that I have tools to move beyond circumstances or situations that are not producing the results that I was actually intending. And those tools are that I always take it inward and I look at what am I intending? What am I focusing on? What am I perceiving that is limiting me from actually receiving, right? So let me just pause for a second and say hi to Kimberly and Clement and Monica. Great to have you join us today. Thank you for being here. And I know that I'm totally behind. I'm in a completely different time zone and I was supposed to be on here an hour ago, but here we are. So appreciate the opportunity to connect with all of you. So in the conversation with him today in, in the coaching session, I said to him, well, um, how else could you look at this situation so that it would enable you to find the blessing? Could you instead say, I have this amazing account executive that has invited me out to have a meeting with one of our stakeholders and by actually making this visit, I get to keep my thumb on the pulse of what's going on out in the field instead of being behind my desk, actually wondering what my team is truly experiencing. And so it's just about sometimes reframing whatever it is that's going on with you so that you're not feeling like a victim. So if you're feeling any of these lower vibrational or lower energy emotions, then you're definitely out of alignment. So asking different questions always opens up your mind to be able to perceive differently, to be able to receive more, to um, be able to not have any kind of negative emotion going on, percolating in the back of your mind or some kind of limiting belief um, you know, the biggest thing is fear and doubt. And so whenever you're in this, any, any kind of an experience and you're feeling um, negated or you're looking outside of yourself for that validation, well, what if the people that you're speaking with or connecting with don't have the capacity energetically in that moment to give you the feedback that you think you have to have in order to feel good. Are you going to let that ruin your day? Are you going to let that bring you down? Are you going to let that put you into some kind of negative sort of thought process or inner dialogue that then completely um, taints and stains the rest of your experiences throughout the day? We can, we can either drag stuff with us and keep recreating that negativity or we can just look at it and go, I'm in alignment with what I'm saying and I'm going to continue to put myself into alignment with what I'm saying energetically so that the people that I'm connecting to and the people that I'm espousing this message to will be able to feel it not just hear it i was looking around on youtube 
And um, there's a video on YouTube. Hi, Earl. Thanks for joining us. There's a video on YouTube um, that basically talks about the, the one thing that, that ultra high net worth individuals do every day to attract to them and create what it is they want to experience. And it was all about visualization. And it was interesting to me because I was thinking like that's 10 year old technology. It, it's so much more than visualization. And yes, visualization is really, really important, truly. But I also know from being a high performance coach for ever, <laughs> like 20 years plus, um, that is way more than visualizing. You have to get into the feeling. It's the feeling that makes it so because it's the feeling that, that, that connects into the fabric of, of the unseen world. It's the feeling that pulls energy to it because energy is a feeling. Energy is much, much more than a visual. It is a feeling. And that's why it's so important to have a really good relationship with yourself because the better the relationship with yourself, the more self-aware, and then you can recalibrate yourself on the fly. And in that recalibration, you can continually put yourself back into alignment. So what I'm saying around that is it's natural to fall out of alignment. We could get knocked out of alignment many times throughout the day. And there's nothing wrong with that, which brings me to my next point. You have to stop making being out of alignment a bad thing because it's in the contrast, you see? It's in the contrast that if you, if you fall out of alignment and, and, you're, and you're not really connecting to yourself, you know, maybe I should back up and just say, what do you guys think alignment means? What do you think it means to be in alignment? Being in alignment is connecting to your inner being, the part of you that is infinite, the part of you that can do anything, absolutely anything. It can create and manifest and experience anything. So when you come from that place, that's alignment. Now, when we're entertaining thoughts of fear, thoughts of doubt, thoughts of lack, um, we're beating up on ourselves, we're like drumming our fingers, going, why hasn't happened yet? Why hasn't happened yet? Why hasn't happened yet? Like crazy stuff that actually stops the flow towards us. That's being out of alignment. And the good part of that, so if we take the wrongness out of being out of alignment, the good part about being out of alignment is you actually get to experience what you don't want. And it's through that filter that you get to recalibrate yourself into alignment. But here's the caveat. You have to care enough about how you feel that when you end up out of alignment and you're in some sort of pain state, and there's varying degrees of pain states, right? Some people, oh my gosh, I said this to a client the other day that owns a, an insurance agency and we're, he has two of them and they, they don't communicate and we're, we're merging the two. And I've worked with this gentleman off and on for the last 15 years too. And every time we're ready to take things to the next level, uh, he circles back through my existence and then we bump him up to the next level. And one of the things I said to him is, you really have to uh, care how you feel. And unfortunately, right, thank you. Unfortunately for him, I guess, he has a really high tolerance of pain. He can feel so bad for so long 
that he drives his, his health down. And even when his health gets driven down, he still has the, so much capacity for pain that he doesn't let himself shift. So pain is an indicator that you're out of alignment. And the question is, what's your capacity for pain? How much are you willing to crush yourself before you're willing to allow yourself to be in alignment and to experience the joy of life, the gift of life, the beauty of life, because life was never designed to be a struggle, ever. Well, maybe in the caveman days. Hi, Luke. Nice to have you, and um, thanks for joining us today. I appreciate it. Got the LAPD on board here. Haven't seen you in ages. So being in alignment is about being in a state of joy and anything less than a state of joy is you're focusing on what doesn't work. You're focusing on what's wrong with something and it's in the wrongness that we actually keep ourselves from realizing the blessing. And I suppose that's where that saying comes from, you know, within every cloud, there's a silver lining and it's true within every cloud, there's a silver lining. You just have to um, tune yourself to the silver lining rather than attuning yourself to the cloud. I can think of another client. This is a crazy story, you guys. I worked with a, um, a mortgage broker and um, he brought on uh, a partner Hi, Wayne Yee, nice to see you. And Daryl Gaines, where are you on the planet these days, Daryl? Usually you're hanging out in Colorado skiing, so nice to have you join us. Um, he had brought in this partner, and the partner, so the first thing I do when I go into an organization is I do a value solicitation with everybody because I want to find out what drives their behavior. And if you haven't actually sat down and done a value solicitation, to do some self-discovery on what's driving you really deep core values from the inside. I would recommend, highly recommend you do it before you go jumping in and pursuing all those big goals for 2019, take the time and go through your values because that's what's really driving the bus. It's not the, it's not the goals. The goals are like, like the values are like the foundation that we dig into the earth and we pour the cement. And you know the story, the taller the building we're building, the deeper the foundation has to go. And thank you. So I've experienced that even on a personal level. Like I've got these flipping enormous goals, you guys. And sometimes I have felt like, when are they coming? Like, did you ever feel like that? Like, when the hell am I going to manifest this big flipping goal that I've been working on all of my life? You know, that's the negative self-talk, right? But we're human beings. And so we're going to ask the question. It's, it's normal. There's nothing wrong with that. And so the thing is, though, the, um, the bigger the goal, the deeper the foundation has to be built. And I've seen it time and time again. If you look at celebrities, you look at the entertainment world and you take like super talented people and they hit fame fast and big and then boom, they fall because they don't have the foundation to be able to navigate that level of success and everything that comes at you when you become like this massive name this huge brand. So if you haven't hit your goals yet, it could be just a matter of not being in alignment. It could also be that maybe you need to go in and do a little bit of personal growth work and let go of some of those limiting beliefs and some of that negative self-talk and definitely let go of the fear and the doubt because there's nothing that kills a goal or a desire for um, 
self-creation more than fear and doubt. Like nothing kills it faster. It's, it's, it's like swimming in two different directions simultaneously. It'll like, it's like being pulled apart, right? By, by your chains on either, on either arm and you're being pulled apart. So it, it's just about getting into that flow and headed one direction only. And that one direction is all about focusing on what you are creating. Stop looking at things the way they are. Even if things are shit, you just stop looking at it and instead look at what you're creating. So what I do is I have this card that I put my goals on and it sits in front of me. It's the last thing I read before I go to sleep. It's the first thing I read in the morning. And then I read it throughout the day whenever I take a break. And I've actually had great joy in, in handwriting it. And I put it on green because that was the color that appealed to me when I was flipping through my cards. And I'm like, do I want pink or blue or purple or green? So, you know, make it creative, make it fun and make it simple. You know, I've got like seven things for Q1 and I just keep them really big, broad brush strokes and I don't get into the how, never, ever, ever get into the how. Let your unconscious mind, let your inner being, let the universe, let God, let the multiverse, I don't care what you call it, but stop trying to figure out the how, because guess what? You don't know what you don't know. And your inner being is always guiding you toward whatever it is that you ask it for. You just got to get out of the way and listen for the guidance and then act on the guidance. If you get a message to call somebody, flip and call them. doesn't matter if you're in the middle of something else, just pick up the phone and call them because there's the nugget. You see, there's the nugget. Hi, Lynn. Nice to see you. And Jose, thanks for joining us. So let me tell you the story about this client. So mortgage broker has an office, takes on a partner. The partner is super high level salesy kind of thinking system. And they brought me in and hired me to, to scale their business. And I said to the owner, the principal, I said, you know, I'm really concerned about this partner because when I do his values, there is no conscience filter. So he was so highly driven to achieve numbers that he was out of balance. You know, he was, he was, he was willing to step over people. It's, it's kind of like uh, in government sometimes or in some companies. Hi, Paul. Thanks for joining us. You know, in some companies and some government, a lot of government, <laughs> most government, um, people crawl over each other to get to the top and it's all ego based. So there isn't a conscience filter, you know, it's like whatever I need to do to get here, I'm willing to do it. So what ended up happening is he came at the business from that perspective. Um, he was sitting on the other side of the building and so we couldn't track how ethically he was functioning until after the fact, and then it became too late. So what I did was I re-architected the layout of the business and I brought in, I brought him over next to the CEO. We, we moved all the desks around. We actually cut a window in the wall between the offices so that there was total transparency. And then I moved his assistant into a, into a different role because she was enabling and she was, you know, part of the problem. And I took the CEO's assistant and I put her in the middle and she was handling both execs. Wow. Let me tell you, it was on a Friday and over the weekend, the tech guys are coming in to move all the phone lines and get all the computers moved and everything all set up. And it was about 11 o'clock at night and I get a call from the CEO and he's gone back to the office. He just had this gut feeling, right? 
And I want to just preface this by saying that I was concerned there was going to be some kind of mutiny. And I said to him, if you're not careful, he's going to take your files and he's going to walk off and start his own business. And he wouldn't believe me. The CEO was adamant that this was a great guy. This is a friend of his. He would never do anything like that. But you know when you have that feeling, right? You just have that gut feeling. And I said, no, 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 no. I feel it and it's undeniable. So on a Friday night, I get a phone call at 11 o'clock at night and this guy is devastated. He's like, you're not going to believe this happened. And I went, yeah, I probably will. You probably don't even need to tell me. So, you know, exactly what I predicted came to pass because I could read the thinking of that organization and that CEO was not in alignment or he would have seen it coming. So we always know, you guys, we always know when we're in alignment with our inner being, we can like sense things before they happen. We can feel people's energy. We can, we can sense, we can, we can kind of, you know, prophesize our own realities just from being in touch with our inner being. And I don't care what it is, what industry you're in or what profession you're in. Um, it's the same, you know, whether you work for someone or you work for yourself, you can tell when something's not clicking. And if you ignore the signs, then you're setting yourself up for massive failure. And I want you to just take away these stories and start honoring yourself with your own ability to guide yourself. And instead of looking outside of yourself for the answer, look within and learn to have a dialogue with yourself. Ask yourself, what is it that you really feel right about? What's the feeling around what it is you're doing? And then choose what feels right. And whether that's a relationship with a lover, whether it's a relationship with a partner, whether it's who you, how you interact with people in a job that you have to interact with every day because they're just part of the organization, really start to tune in and pay attention to the energy of what's going on. This is the future. When my book comes out, it's all about the future paradigm. We have already started to shift into a time where it's, it's not about how things look anymore. It's how they feel. So when I was watching this YouTube video and the woman was talking about how ultra high net worth individuals create their, their wealth. And all she was talking about is visualization. You know, what came across my mind was, and I'm not going to say any names, but there's a certain seminar leader that has, tens of thousands of people following them and he fills stadiums. And, you know, the thing that I've always felt about this person is they never really truly taught their audience and their followers the, the real, the real like nugget of how to create change within your life. They always hold back so they can sell you the next $5,000 program. And I swore to myself, I would never create that business model, that I was gonna create a business model that was all about giving. And yes, in the beginning, it cost me a lot of income. I, it cost money. But in the big picture of what I'm delivering, it creates complete and utter freedom in humanity and in society. And that pays more than any income that I might have lost in the beginning, because as this thing continues to blow open, it becomes exponential income for me. It becomes exponential wealth. There's just, it's infinite. And this is the thing I want you to take away, is really dial into you, like your greatest, communication with yourself is going to be what 
gets you where you want to go in your life because you are already hardwired for it. Your inner being already has it mapped. And all you have to do is surrender to that relationship with yourself and trust and follow the guidance and the answers will reveal themselves one step at a time as you have the awareness and the capacity to step forward and to maximize each and every step along your path. So that's my show for today. If you're in LA, I'm doing a mastermind this Saturday on the 23rd, and it's a really good deal. It's 297 for the day, and we have a very intimate group around the boardroom table, and I'm walking you through a process of up-leveling your life and your business. And then my next one after that is March 1st, and that's a higher fee, so if you wanna get in and save a couple hundred bucks, come this weekend. And then April 22nd and 23rd, I'm doing a two-day boot camp in Los Angeles. And in between, I'm in London, Amsterdam, and the south of France. So um, May, I'm back in Canada teaching a boot camp in Alberta. Lots on the agenda, and that's just the first couple quarters. And I haven't even told you everything else that I'm doing in between. I'll let you know when the book is ready to launch and you can get yourself a copy. Um, thank you. And please head over to my YouTube channel. It's Neuroengineering Institute. I have tons and tons and tons of free coaching content there for you guys. And I don't hold back. In every video, I'm giving you the full enchilada of exactly what it is you need to do. And all you have to do is act on it. So Neuroengineering Institute and my new website is neimind.com. So hope to see you this weekend. PM me your email address and I will send you the details for this weekend's mastermind and the boot camp that's coming up. Love you. Thank you. Have a blessed day. Take it easy. Be good to yourself. Practice self-love and say kind things.